Hi and welcome back. In this video I will introduce the concept of marginal benefit and allocative efficiency. I will also explain how to find the optimal production combination and explain why it is the optimal production choice. But before I jump straight into calculating allocative efficiency, I'm going to briefly summarize what we need to know before defining and calculating allocative efficiency. Let's continue using our simple two good economy and let's assume all productive resources, such as labor, capital and land, are fully employed. By assuming full employment, we know that any production combination chosen will be production efficient, with those combinations forming the PPF line. If we choose three random production efficient combinations of wheat and power lines, we still do not know which combination out of all the production efficient combinations is the best one. The preferred production efficient point is called the allocative efficient point. This is because the point is productive efficient and the allocation of the goods produced is also efficient. And by efficient allocation, we mean the allocation which maximizes the benefit of the economy. Generally speaking, consumers like to, well, consume. And the more we consume, the larger the satisfaction. When we buy and eat food, we derive a benefit from that consumption. It's the same for when we purchase goods like cars or computers, or even services like a haircut or pest control. So we can therefore safely assume that consumers in our simple economy will derive a benefit from producing and purchasing power lines and wheat. Consumers also prefer more to less. This is why any point within the PPF curve cannot be an allocative efficient point because all the points within the PPF represent production allocations not at full employment. So there's always another allocation with more of at least one of the goods that can be achieved. But consumers prefer to consume a mix of goods rather than the same good over and over again. For example, people enjoy eating different kinds of food. No matter how good a hamburger is, you're unlikely to want to eat that same hamburger for the rest of your life. It's like watching the same movie over and over again. Almost all individuals would prefer to watch different movies and do a variety of entertainment activities. By using what we've learned about marginal cost and combining it with our understanding of benefits, we can find the allocative efficient combination, of which there is only one. But first, let's understand marginal benefit. When we refer to the term benefit, we mean satisfaction or reward. And when we refer to the term marginal, we mean the last part, the incremental or the extra one unit. So marginal benefit in our example of wheat or power lines is simply the benefit the economy receives from consuming an extra unit of either good. For example, when our hypothetical economy decides to produce four tons of wheat instead of three tons, the economy receives or experiences a benefit from consuming this extra one ton of wheat. This benefit is known as the marginal benefit of the fourth ton of wheat. The concept of marginal benefit is very similar to marginal cost. While we cannot measure benefit in terms of units of satisfaction, we can rank benefit. For instance, if you were hungry and decided to eat a biscuit, it would be quite satisfying. If you had a second biscuit, it would still be satisfying, but probably not as satisfying as the first. Therefore, we can say that the first biscuit is more satisfying than the second, and so on. One way in which economists like to measure satisfaction is willingness to pay. The more you like something, the more you're willing to pay for it. If we stick to our biscuit example, the more biscuits you eat, the less you're willing to pay for the next biscuit, because the satisfaction you'll derive from eating another biscuit will be less than the previous biscuit you ate. So satisfaction decreases as we increase the consumption of the same good. This is because individuals prefer a mix of goods rather than more of the same. So marginal benefit decreases as consumption increases because marginal benefit is defined as the satisfaction derived from consuming an additional unit of a particular good. This trend or observation is so well understood and accepted that we refer to it as the law of decreasing marginal benefit. When studying economics, we do not use money to define benefit or cost. We use relative goods. 
Recall how we measured the marginal cost of wheat. We measured it in terms of the amount of power lines that had to be given up in order to produce more wheat. In a similar way, marginal benefit is measured relative to another good. In our example, we'll measure the benefit of wheat consumption in terms of power lines. So in other words, how many kilometers of power lines would give the economy as much benefit as consuming an extra ton of wheat? Or what is the willingness of the economy to pay in terms of power lines for more wheat consumption? In figure A, we're going to illustrate the marginal benefit of wheat. Generally, marginal benefit values will be given to you in a test or question, either in the form of a table, graph or formula. The reason for this is because benefit or satisfaction is not derived from any sort of function, but rather it is a reflection of consumer preferences. What we do know is that marginal benefit should be a decreasing line as per the law of decreasing marginal benefit. So in figure A, the marginal benefit line is drawn for us. From this line, we can plot some values by reading off the x and y axes. Remember, from this line, we can calculate the marginal benefit of consuming additional tons of wheat. Because we prefer a variety of goods, we will be willing to give up less kilometers of power lines for more wheat, the more wheat we produce. Let's say our simple economy is really hungry and that they are producing no wheat at all. With no wheat to eat, the economy is willing to give up a relatively large amount of power lines for the first ton of wheat. This is illustrated towards the top of the marginal benefit curve around point A. If the economy still wants more wheat, it could produce a second ton of wheat, but this time the economy is not as hungry as before, so the satisfaction won't be as great as the first ton of wheat. So for the second ton of wheat, the economy is still willing to pay with some kilometers of power lines for more wheat, but not as much as for the first ton of wheat. In essence, the economy values the second ton of wheat less than the first ton because the overall benefit or satisfaction derived from consuming the second ton was lower than the first. This pattern of falling marginal benefit or a falling willingness to pay can be seen by moving down the marginal benefit curve and by looking at how many kilometers of power lines the economy is willing to give up as more wheat is being produced and consumed. So now that we have defined marginal cost and marginal benefit we can use the two concepts to help us identify the allocative efficient combination. When marginal cost equals marginal benefit, we cannot choose a better allocation of goods. So let's explore why this is the case. When the marginal cost of wheat is greater than the marginal benefit, we can increase our overall benefit by producing less wheat. Another way of thinking about it is that when the marginal cost of wheat is greater than the marginal benefit, it means that at that level of production of wheat, we value power lines more, and therefore we can increase our levels of overall satisfaction by producing more power lines and less wheat. It works the other way around too. If the marginal benefit of wheat is greater than the marginal cost, we can improve our overall benefit or satisfaction by producing more wheat. Because the benefit we're deriving from the extra ton is greater than the cost, in other words, the amount of power lines we're willing to pay for an extra ton of wheat is more than the amount of power lines we actually have to give up in order to produce that extra ton of wheat. This process will continue until marginal cost equals marginal benefit. Let's look at our marginal benefit and cost graphs to see how these behaviors work in action. Because both our marginal cost and marginal benefit curves use the same metric or measure on the y-axis, we can combine them into a single marginal cost and benefit graph for wheat. You can see this graph in figure B below. An important rule to remember is that in economics, nominal prices are seldom used. To remove any confusion that may arise from changing prices or inflation, we always use relative prices or relative goods in all tables and graphs. In our case, we are using kilometers of power lines as a relative good in order to measure marginal cost and marginal benefit of wheat. Remember we said that allocative efficiency occurs when marginal cost equals marginal benefit. 
So we can already identify this point by looking at the intersection of the marginal benefit and marginal cost curves. This is point B dash, which corresponds to two and a half tons of wheat and where marginal cost and marginal benefit both equal to three kilometers of power lines. So where the economy is willing to give up an additional three kilometers of power lines for an additional ton of wheat, and where the additional ton of wheat is equal to the same benefit as an additional three kilometers of power lines, is where the allocative efficient combination lies. Given the economy's desire for a mix of power lines and wheat, and given that all productive resources are used, the amount of wheat that this economy wants to consume is two and a half tons. But be careful, the marginal cost and benefit graph does not tell you the most preferred amount of power lines, only the amount of wheat that corresponds to the PPF. To find out how many kilometers of power lines this economy wants to produce, we need to find the combination on the PPF that corresponds to two and a half tons of wheat. Figure A shows our original PPF and the combination that corresponds to two and a half tons of wheat is combination J. At point J, 11 kilometers of power lines are produced, which shows us the combination which is most preferred by this economy. But what if our economy is not producing at point J? Let's assume the economy is producing one ton of wheat and 14 kilometers of power lines. This is point B on the PPF. At this production efficient combination, we know that the marginal benefit of producing an extra ton of wheat is greater than the marginal cost to produce it. So marginal cost is less than marginal benefit. In other words, the economy feels that the benefit it derives from an extra ton of wheat is greater than the opportunity cost of the amount of power lines it has to give up in order to produce that extra ton of wheat. And because this is a rational and logical economy, it decides to move productive resources away from producing power lines to producing more wheat. This choice can be illustrated on the PPF by a rightward movement along the PPF towards point J. This rightward movement will continue until production combination J is reached, where marginal cost equals marginal benefit. In a similar way, if the economy was producing at point E, then marginal cost would be greater than marginal benefit. At this point on the PPF, the economy decides that it is producing too much wheat and that it prefers more of a mix of goods and therefore would rather produce more power lines and less wheat. At this point, the cost in terms of foregone power line production is much higher than the benefit from the wheat produced. Therefore, the economy will reallocate productive resources away from producing wheat to producing more power lines. This can be illustrated by a leftward shift on the PPF towards point J. Again, this leftward movement will only stop once point J is reached, where marginal cost equals marginal benefit. Lastly, if preferences change or relative costs change, then the marginal benefit and marginal cost curves will shift, resulting in a different allocative efficient point or allocation. Using the same method we just described, the economy will try to maximize its overall benefit by moving productive resources to produce the goods which bring it the highest level of overall benefit, or where marginal cost again equals marginal benefit.